Danger Dolan. From groups of natives living just outside city limits to tribes discovered by accident wandering through the forest, we count 15 small civilizations untouched by modern society. Number 15. The Yahi Group. This is part of a larger group known as the Yana people, a tribe of Native Americans indigenous to Northern California and the Sierra Nevada mountains. In the 1700s, their numbers exceeded 1,500, but when the gold rush took place, miners and ranchers stormed the location and slaughtered a huge amount of them simply for defending their homeland. A man named Ishii was the last surviving member of this group, since his custom is that he would be introduced to a friend by his family, and his family were all dead, he would never reveal his true name, and instead the Yahi word for man, Ishii, became his name. He taught people how to make professional arrowheads and bows before his death in 1916. Today, certain members of the Yana people still survive, but none of the Yahi. Number 14. Vietnamese Ruck. It was during the Vietnam War when bombs fell left and right on presumably uncivilized regions that it scared local natives so much that they finally stormed out of their jungle to the amazement of Vietnam soldiers. Because the jungle was so heavily damaged, the Ruck tribe had no choice except to join modern civilization rather than go back to the smoldering ruin that was their home. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though. Their tribe values clashed with government ideals and hatred from both parties formed. Number 13. The Awa Gwaja people. These guys are an endangered indigenous group living in the eastern Amazon forests of Brazil. They only exist around 300 currently, with less than 100 totally isolated from the outside world. But the problem is loggers continually encroach on their land, and the Brazilian government was slow to block off the area so that they'd survive. So most of their numbers were massacred, including an 8 year old girl in 2011, who happened to be inside a protected area when loggers destroyed their camp. Theirs has been voted by Survival International as Earth's most threatened tribe. Number 12. The Batak Tribe, a group of people generally thought to be the first inhabitants of the Philippines, were once a large prosperous people, but today disease brought by outsiders kill a lot of their community, and government laws forbid traditional ways of farming. Once Survival International heard about this, they launched a campaign to give back their rights and land, to showcase what effect their laws and regulations have on the Batak. But today, we see less than 300 members, and since they tend not to marry other Batak members, but occasionally those from other tribes, their bloodline has diluted to a point where some contest their people barely exist as a distinct entity. Number 11. The Pintupi. Western Australia, a group of nine hunter-gatherer desert-dwelling people who survived without society until 1984. They made contact with their relatives near Kirakua who informed them about a strange place where food was plentiful and water came from pipes. They were intrigued, but one member, Yari Yari, returned to the desert, whereas the others would settle in Kirakawa, and a few even became pseudo-celebrities for their artistic abilities. Number 10. The Jackson Whites. The 1700s, the final hours in Europe's colonization of North America's east coast, when all tribe people from the Atlantic to the Mississippi were documented and catalogued. Then, New York in 1790, an unheard of tribe of Native Americans waltzed out of the forest like they hadn't even existed before that point. Wars had raged, wars against natives, and yet the Jacksons had avoided all of it. Number 9. The Akunsu. This is an indigenous tribe from Rodonia, Brazil, and like the Awas, they're facing extinction. They're a group of hunter-gatherers that supplement their diet with Sweden agriculture. But a group of ranchers found their camp and massacred their people, then covered up the remains with bulldozers to hide the evidence, because otherwise the land would be closed as an indigenous reserve and unavailable for logging or ranching. Only five members survive today, and it is generally believed that people will not survive with so small a number. Number 8. The Jarawa. These guys live on the Andamanese Islands, and like with a lot of the other tribes in this list, their numbers barely exceed 300. For a long time, they resisted contact with humans until 1997, when they visited a local community, then immediately got sick with the measles. 
Sadly, the Jurawas are today a tourist attraction where hundreds flock to view and photograph their tribe as they go about their daily lives, even though government regulations prohibit this. Number 7. The Sentinelese. These are distant cousins of the Jarawans, a culture shrouded in mystery on a small island of India, located in the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Islands. Every time people have tried to get close to this island, the Sentinelese send back hundreds of arrows and spears. So it's difficult to gauge their numbers though, we've made several attempts to contact them. It is rumoured that people have lived there for tens of thousands of years, directly descended from the first humans to leave Africa. Number 6. The Mayaruna people. These are an indigenous tribe of the Peruvian and Brazilian Amazon, one whose ancestral lands are currently threatened by logging and poaching from modern society. During the 1900s, they were deeply untrusting of the Peruvian government since warfare saw their villages hit by napalm and the like. But in 1969, they accepted missionaries into their community. According to the missionaries, the Mayaruna people see the physical and spiritual world as entities present throughout the world, one that assists in the technical aspects of hunting game. Number 5. The Nukak Mahu people. This is a smaller tribe that resides in the Amazonian forest, the population exceeding 400 individuals. They first made regular contact with society in 1988, and since then over half of them have died mostly from attacks and disease. So now they don't really contact society, and I can't blame them. They live in small pockets of 30 persons or less as nomads that wander to and fro, using blow darts to kill prey using poison from five different types of plant. Number 4. The Aruyuyu Wawa. These guys come from Brazil, living in the state of Redonia, with six villages along with a few other subgroup tribes, some that haven't even been contacted by us yet. In 1981, they came into contact with the National Indian Foundation, but disease and violent attacks pulverized their numbers, and 10 years later, the largest tin deposit was found smack bang in their land. The Brazilian government came in at the last second to prevent loggers and miners from invading their territory, and the non-government organization Canindi fights outsiders trying to attack the tribe. Currently, their numbers barely exceed 100. Number 3. The Zoe, a small tribe of 250 members in the north of Brazil. They get along growing plants and the occasional hunt, but are otherwise peaceful. Their relationships are polygamous, meaning each can marry a few people, not just one. And they're also a community without hierarchy, so that they're all equal. In 1987, they first contacted outsiders, but once again, death swept through their village, so authorities stopped anyone else from encountering their members to protect them. Number two, a Peruvian tribe. It was a tourist group tromping around through the jungles of Peru. They found a curious mishmash of natives nobody had ever encountered before. And at the time, they tried communicating in a variety of languages, but the natives wouldn't respond. Anthropologists inspected the video footage brought back from the tourists and realized this tribe was one of the few in the area they had not found before. Number 1. Eorio Toto Biegosad. A rough translation of these words comes to People of the Place of the Wild Pigs, a tribe in a harsh forest area known as Chaco. According to reports, they'd contacted society in the 1940s, but after some of their numbers were forced to evacuate the forest, they started their nomadic life deep in the jungle. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!